You're welcome to another edition of Chemistry SHS1. My name is Richard James. In our last meeting, we learned the periodic properties. We started with the atomic radius or the atomic size. And we came to the variation of atomic radius across the period. We couldn't look at its variation within a group. And today, we are going to continue from there and continue with the rest of the periodic properties. So, as we said, atomic radius or the atomic size is the one half the distance between the nuclei of two closed atoms. And uh, we looked at the, the variation across the period. We say that it um, decreases across the period from left to right. And uh, we also look at the factors. We said it depends on the effective nuclear charge and the screening effect. So we combine these factors and we say that it decreases across a period from left to right. Now we are looking at the within a group. The variation of a atomic radius within a group. Atomic radius increases down a group. Why? Down a group electrons enter into new principal quantum shells which are far away from the nucleus and if you can remember when we were looking at the Bohr's theory of the hydrogen atom of the atom we said that uh, the principal quantum number release the average distance of the electron from the nucleus so as Electrons are entering into new shells. They are beginning to move far away, or they are far away from the nucleus. Also, more electrons come in to do their shielding. So the outermost electrons are shielded greatly from the attractive forces from the nucleus. So it means that as electrons are moving far away, it reduces the kind of attraction by the protons in the nucleus. So the outermost electrons are not strongly pulled to the nucleus and thereby the electron cloud moves away 
and that decrease uh, that increases the atomic size so within a group or down a group atomic radius and atomic size increases because electrons enter into new principal quantum shells and that more electrons come in it increases the core electrons and the uh, attraction for the outermost electrons decreases and they are not strongly pulled to the nucleus and as a result atomic radius or atomic size increases so down a group atomic radius increases the next periodic property we are looking at is ionic radius or radar ionic radius or the radar ionic radius refers to the radius of an ion whether a cation or an ion so it means that it's a radius of a cation or a radius of an ion are you getting me? Ion radius can be measured by S-ray diffraction or electron diffraction. So now, we know, we learned about formation of ions. We have two types of ions. We have ions that are negatively charged and ions that are positively charged. The ions that bear positive charges are called cations. And those that bear negative charges are called anions. How are they formed? Cations are formed when an atom loses one or more electrons from its outermost shells. And anions are formed when one or more electrons are gained onto the outermost shells. So with this formation or when this happens, the size of the atom or the ion will change and we are going to look at cations and the size of cations and their neutral atoms. And you also look at the size of anions and their neutral atoms. So let's put something down. Ionic radius.
Okay. So when ions are formed, we expect a change in the uh, the radius of the ion or the size. So we are going to compare cations, the size or radius of cations, and the neutral atom from which the ions are formed. So radius of cations and their neutral atoms. As I've told you, anytime an ion is formed, the size of the radius will change. And now, when cations are formed, electrons are lost from the outermost shells. So the protons in the nucleus, the number doesn't change. So we have the same number of protons attracting now fewer electrons. And as a result, the outermost electrons will be pulled or will be attracted strongly and it, they will then be moved closer to the nucleus, thereby decreasing the size of the ion. So in effect, cations have smaller radar than their neutral atoms because of one or two loss of electrons. When electrons are lost, the same number of protons in the nucleus will attract fewer electrons. And electrons will be moved closer or nearer to the nucleus, thereby decreasing the ionic size of cations.
So, cations usually have smaller radar than their neutral atoms. For example, sodium ion. is smaller is smaller in size than the sodium atom Let us now also look at the aberrant size and their neutral atoms. The size of anions and the neutral atoms from which they are formed. As we said, anions are formed when one or more electrons are gained onto the outermost shells. This time around, we have more electrons being attracted by the same number of protons. The additional electrons gained will increase the number of electrons in the atomic shell. And therefore, it will decrease the attraction, the attraction between the protons in the nucleus and the atom electrons will then decrease. And therefore, the electron cloud will increase. Will increase. I hope you are getting me. Because of the additional electrons being attracted by the same number of protons, the size of the ion, the anion, will increase. Another thing is that the additional electrons will increase electron-electron repulsion. And when electron-electron repulsion, the electron density or the cloud will then increase. And therefore, with these two factors, we get to know the fact that as anions are formed, the size will be larger than the neutral atoms. This is opposite to what happens when cations are formed. So anions have larger size or radius than their neutral atoms due to one, the additional electrons will decrease the attraction, the force being ejected by the protons in the nucleus for the outermost electrons. When, when that happens, the electron cloud will increase, thereby increasing the size of the ion. Another thing is also the electron neutron repulsion caused by the additional electrons gained will then increase the electron cloud.
So that is it. These two reasons illustrate or tell us why anions have larger radii than their neutral atoms. Now, let's look at how to determine the size of two species, whether one is going to be larger than the other. There is a, a quick way to determine that. For example, when you are given isoelectronic series or two pairs of uh, species, one, whether they are atoms or ions, I mean a mixture of ions and atoms, and you are asked to arrange or you are asked to, you're asked to compare the two, which one will be larger or in size or which one will be smaller in size. There is another way to do it. We use something called proton electron ratio. We divide the number of protons in the species by the number of electrons. The smaller this ratio, the larger the effective nuclear charge and the smaller the size of the species. For example, if you have this sodium ion, you are asked to compare with the maybe sodium atom. You use this ratio proton electron ratio. You know, sodium has 11 protons. So we have 11 here protons. Then now we have sodium ion. Positive one means one electron is lost. So it has 10 electrons. So 11 divided by 10 is going to give you, this ratio is going to give us um, 1.1. And sodium here, we have 11 protons. It's neutral. So 11 divided by 11, what do you have? Uh, 1.0. So here we have 1.1 and 1.0. So 1.1 is larger than 1.0. So it means that sodium ion will have larger effective nuclear charge. And therefore it's expected to be smaller in size than the um, sodium atom. Let's move on to difficult ones. So, note, we use this. The proton electron ratio. Size or radar of two or more species.
So the larger the proton electron ratio, the larger the effective nuclear charge, and the smaller the size, and vice versa. Let's look at um, take some examples and we use this ratio to compare two species. Okay, so it says that uh, for each of the following pairs, indicate the one which is larger. So we are going to use the proton electron ratio to do it. First of all, we are giving N3 minus that's the nitride ion and F minus the fluoride ion. So what we do is that get the number of protons for the nitrate ion. You know nitrogen that is a seven element atom. Atomic number is seven, and therefore it has seven protons. So nitrogen here N has seven protons, and we have negative three means that it has gained three electrons. So seven protons and 10 electrons. So the ratio P over L ratio is going to be 7 divided by 10. And this will give us 0 0.7. Let's look at the fluoride. F minus. Has nine protons and now we have C minus the means that has gain one electron ten electrons so the P proton electron ratio is going to give us nine over ten which is got zero point nine and we say that the larger the proton electron ratio, the larger the effective nuclear charge, and the smaller the size. So it, it tells you that a fluoride having 0 0.9 ratio is larger than 0 0.7, therefore, or that of a nitride, fluoride will be smaller in terms of size than the nitride ion because the proton electron ratio of uh, uh, the fluoride is 0 0.9 being higher than 0 0.7 and it said that the larger the ratio the larger the effective nuclear charge and the smaller the size so Right, having 
larger proton electron ratio as P over P is smaller is smaller than the nitride ion. In other ways, nitride ion is larger than fluoride ion. I will be following me. Let's do for the last one. The last example, we said we should compare the calcium ion and the magnesium ion. We are given calcium ion and magnesium. We are given this C two plus and Mg two plus. For this one, let's look at the proton electron ratio. Calcium. The atomic number is twenty, so it tells you that uh, it has twenty protons. And now it has lost two electrons. Meaning, how many electrons now? Mm -hmm. 18. So, this ratio will give us those having calculator. Let me use my calculator 20 divided by 18. And this one we have um, 12. The yeah, number is 12. So, we have 12 divided by. Now magnesium ion, meaning it has, get, uh, it has lost two electrons. So how many electrons now? Ten. This will give us 1.1. And this 12 divided by 10 will give us um, 1.2. So here, we see 1.2 and 1.2. Which one is larger? 1.2 is larger than 1.1. So it means that magnesium will have the larger proton electron ratio and it's going to have larger effective nuclear charge and the size will be smaller than the calcium so calcium is larger calcium ion is larger than magnesium ion so with this we can see that calcium ions or ion is larger than magnesium ions magnesium ion because C because M G2 plus higher proton electron ratio that is it. So we use this, and it's a shortcut method for you to compare. If you are giving even isoelectronic series atoms and ions that are isoelectronic, we can also use it to arrange them in descending order or uh, ascending order. Just compute the proton electron ratio. The one having the largest proton electron ratio will be the smallest among them. And uh, the one having the the smallest uh, proton electron ratio will be the smallest in terms of size. So that is how we do it. Um, this is where we are ending the lesson. Uh, I'm going to give you some few assignments. I expect you to do it, and uh, you submit it in our next meeting. And if you have any question, you can also uh, send them to the same website. Uh, then in our uh, next lesson we will look at it. 
So this is your assignment. So, try to solve them and uh, submit your answers to me. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and you've understood the concept. Thank you very much. May the good Lord bless you and be with you. Stay blessed.